Do you know you are hearing vibrations but not sound? Yes, it is true because sounds are mere vibrations but when they enter the ear. Our brain converts these vibrations into electrical signals that are interpreted to us as sound. To unravel the world of sounds, we must start by understanding what sound waves truly are. Sound comes to life through vibrations. It doesn't matter if it's a musical instrument, a person's voice, or even a car horn, it all begins with something vibrating. These vibrations, in turn, create waves in the air, which we perceive as sound. But there is more to sound than just waves. How do we actually hear them? That's what we'll discover first. Our ears are like finely tuned biological instruments, made up of three main parts, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear catches those sound waves and ushers them into the ear canal. Sound waves enter your ear and make your eardrum vibrate. The vibrations travel through three tiny bones in your middle ear, which amplify the sound. The vibrations then reach the cochlea, a snail-shaped structure in your inner ear. Inside the cochlea, tiny hair cells move in response to the vibrations. These hair cells send electrical signals to your brain, which interprets them as sound. Now, shifting gears to sound waves belong to the category of mechanical waves, which means they need a medium to travel through, that medium is air. When something vibrates, it sets off a chain reaction, pushing and pulling air particles to create areas of compression and rarefaction. This ongoing push and pull allows sound waves to travel through the air, eventually reaching our ears. Does that boggle your mind? Fear not, we'll help you grasp it. When sound waves travel, they create regions of high pressure compression and low pressure rarefaction in the air. Kind of like an alternating pattern of hills and valleys, hills represent regions of high pressure, while the valleys represent regions of low pressure. What is compression? It is a region of high pressure and occurs when the air particles are close together. While rarefaction is a region of low pressure occurs when the air particles are spread apart. One complete wave is defined as one compression and one rarefaction. This is equivalent to one hill and one valley in the wave-like pattern. When sound waves travel, they create regions of high and low pressure in the air. This is because they push and pull the air particles as they move. You can think of it as a series of hills and valleys, where the hills are areas of high pressure and the valleys are areas of low pressure. Compression, a compression is a hill of high pressure. This happens when the air particles are squeezed together by the sound wave. Rarefaction, a rarefaction is a valley of low pressure. This happens when the air particles are stretched apart by the sound wave. One complete wave is made of one compression and one rarefaction, or one cycle of the vibration. The concept of compression and rarefaction, are the fundamental building blocks of sound waves. Now, let's we explain you what is sound frequency and pitch, where the speed of those sound waves determines how we perceive their characteristics. So distance between two compressions or two rarefactions is called the wavelength, and the number of waves that pass a point in one second is called the frequency. The frequency determines the pitch of the sound, or how high or low it sounds. The higher the frequency, the higher the pitch, and vice versa. Now that you know what compressions and rarefactions are, can you spot them in this sound wave diagram? See how the peaks and troughs match the hills and valleys. That's how sound waves look when they travel through the air. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's crank up the excitement with another essential characteristic of sound waves, amplitude. Amplitude determines the volume or loudness of a sound. When a sound wave boasts a high amplitude, it goes all out, giving air particles a real workout, and that, my friends, creates a loud sound. Conversely, a lower amplitude produces a more gentle push and pull, resulting in a softer sound. And now, let's pick up the pace as we explore the speed of sound. Remember there is no single speed of sound that applies in all situations, it depends on factors like temperature, humidity, and air pressure. 
But did you know that on an average day at room temperature, sound rockets through the air at a jaw-dropping 343 meters per second or about 1,235 kilometers per hour. But, hang on to that speed though because now we're switching gears. We're moving from the science stuff to something more personal, how sound messes with our feelings. Beyond physics, sound has an emotional superpower. Ever noticed how a particular song can stir happiness, sadness, or nostalgia? It's because sound has the magical ability to trigger emotions in our brains. The tempo, pitch, and timbre of a sound can be your emotional tour guide through the symphony of life. Sound is also not limited to human-made sources, it's a force of nature. Mother Earth serenades us with sounds, from the gentle rustling of leaves to the majestic roar of ocean waves. Now, let's cap off our sound adventure with something that'll truly blow your mind. Have you ever noticed how the pitch of a siren changes as the car approaches and then moves away? Yeah, it's like the siren is getting louder and higher pitched as it gets closer, and then softer and lower pitched as it moves away. That's because of something called the Doppler effect. What's that? The Doppler effect is what happens when the frequency of a sound or light wave changes because the source of the wave or the observer is moving. So, in the case of the siren, the siren is the source of the sound wave, and we, the observers, are standing still. As the car gets closer, the sound waves are compressed, which means that they are packed together more tightly. This makes the pitch of the siren sound higher, exactly. And when the car passes us and starts to move away, the opposite happens. The sound waves are stretched out, which makes the pitch of the siren sound lower. That's pretty cool. So, the Doppler effect is what makes the sirens on emergency vehicles sound like they're changing pitch. And it's also used in many other applications, including radar, sonar, and medical imaging. And that's a wrap form the world of sound. From the initial vibrations to the compression and rarefaction, we've demystified the physics of sound. Whether you're pondering the Doppler effect or feeling the emotional impact of music, sound is more than just noise, it's a fascinating science and an integral part of our lives. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time, keep exploring the wondrous world of sound.